I will introduce China's activities and the prospects of the BRICS consultation. On August 18, 2021, heads of BRICS space authorities of BRICS countries signed the agreement on cooperation on BRICS remote sensing satellite constellation. The five countries jointly build a remote sensing satellite constellation, which will greatly promote the sustainable economic and social development of the five countries and even the world. The satellites are the China's GF6 and the ZY302, Cibers04, one of the Canopes five types spacecraft, and India's Resource Site 2 and the Resource Site 2A. The ground stations are located in Sanya, China, Kuraba, Brazil, Moscow region, Russia, Shadnaga, Hyderabad, India and uh, Hadithuk, South Africa. On May 25, 2022, the China National Space Administration successfully held the first meeting of the BRICS Space Cooperation Joint Committee. At the meeting, three top-level norm, uh, normative doc uh, documents were passed. The BRICS Constellation Data website of China was released and a series of practical results were achieved. This leaves a solid foundation for the constru uh, uh, construction of constellation. On June 23, 2022, the Beijing Declaration of the 14th BRICS Summit was issued. We welcome the establishment of the BRICS Joint Committee on Space Cooperation in line with the Agreement on Cooperation on BRICS Remote Sensing Satellite Constellation and the convening of the first Joint Committee meeting. We are satisfied with the formulation of working procedures for data exchange and joint observation of the BRICS Remote Sensing Satellite Constellation and appreciate the commissioning of data sharing and uh, exchange of the constellation. We encourage BRICS space authorities to continue to effectively utilize the capacity of the constellation and to widely promote application with data of the constellation aimed at uh, facilitating the sustainable development of BRICS countries. China released the BRICS uh, RSSC website supporting the browsing and the downloading of more than 340,000 things of data. The website received more than 3,000 visits from 500 users of BRICS countries. The website has received wide attention. In addition to the BRICS countries, users from the United States, Germany, Mongolia, Ireland and other countries have visited the website. The BRICS Remote Sensing Center Constellation has demonstrated its advantages, further improving the efficiency of space information acquisition and application, and promoting the collaborative use of space information through international cooperation. The bands of various satellite payloads of the BRICS constellation are different. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, and the spectral detection range is expanded based on the combination of the BRICS constellation, which can effectively serve many application fields. The spatial temporal coverage and the effectiveness of data are significantly increased of the combination of the BRICS constellation, which fills the data loss caused by objective facts such as time phase and uh, cloud cover, and can provide high, uh, more high quality data for subsequent applications. The satellite data and products of the BRICS constellation can be maturely verified, which provides strong support for in-orbit cross calibration of payload optimization of quantitative inversion model and uh, improvement of data and uh, product quality. In terms of application cases for BRICS constellation, China has re uh, established uh, 
pilot story area centered on Wenchang International Aerospace City to carry out relevant pilot study applications about carbon source, carbon sink, and environment monitoring. Russia is going to build a monitoring system for forest ecology, observing the uh, Artai Saya Mountain forest region. Indi India carries out uh, work related to nature, uh, nature disaster and uh, environmental monitoring in the mountain ranges of uh, southern India. Brazil intends to research on drought and uh, temperature increase in semi-arid region in northeast uh, Brazil. South Africa is also undertaking research and uh, applications related to human settlement dynamics and uh, land use in Alton region, north of Johannesburg. China has carried out five applications in uh, Hainan Iceland, including carbon source and sink, water environment, burned area, air pollution, and agriculture. The first is the application of carbon source and carbon sink. Mangroves and salt marshes in global coast, coastal areas are important marine blue carbon resources, and their carbon fixation efficiency is more than, uh, than 10 times that of forests. The second is the application of black and odorous water monitoring. For the, uh, the, third, uh, the, third, uh, the, the third application is the monitoring of fibers. And the fourth application is air pollution monitoring. The last is the application of agricultural production evaluation. Up to now, all parties have carried out uh, uh, remote sensing data exchange and constellation pilot study applications in, order, uh, in accordance with the results of the meeting and comprehensively contribute to the sustainable economic and social development of BRICS countries. It can be seen from the above that the BRICS remote sensing satellite constellation data can and has begun to play an important role in environmental protection, combating climate change, promoting agricultural production, and other fields. In the future, China will further expand the application of data to enable constellation to serve social and economic development in more and broader fields. Here, we propose prospects for the BRICS constellation. We will expand BRICS satellite resources and uh, application area of BRICS constellation. The BRICS space agencies will actively explore the construction, construction of physical constellation and gradually form a new pattern of joint design, joint development, joint op operation, and maintenance, joint application. We will actively deepen uh, cooperation in the BRICS remote sensing satellite constellation, promote the construction of a community with a shared future for mankind in the fields of outer space, and contribute to the realization of the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. And now I would like to move on to our next presentation from the Russian Federation.
ladies and gentlemen. If you will just bear with me one moment while we resolve a technical uh, difficulty. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present you today the result of research and developments by Space Research Institute of Russian Academy of Sciences and the Center of Forest Ecology of Russian Academy of Sciences, our results related to the forest monitoring from space. The Russian forest is a factor of global importance uh, for international conventions on climate uh, on climate considering its potential for absorption of atmospheric carbon. Information for carbon budget estimation includes data on land cover, forest characteristics such as growing stock volume, species, age, productivity, and many others, and also on natural anthropogenic disturbances, as well as uh, information about reforestation. Remote sensing from space can provide significant part of information for forest for countrywide carbon budget estimation. To estimate carbon budget, remote sensing data can provide the different information, as I already mentioned, about land cover, the species, ground stock volume, etc., which are, has to be used along with the information on ground samples, about uh, the ground uh, sample, sampling measurements, and also models such as uh, forest growing models, the soil carbon model. For example, uh, in information on land cover of Russia includes uh, uh, several classes, uh, forest, uh, grassland, shrublands, tundra, wetlands, and other information about vegetation and non-vegetation lands. To estimate forest cumber, carbon, it's very important to have information about uh, forest species. And the remote sensing data can provide information on, on dominant species, uh, which are annually updated on the country uh, wide level. The key information on forest carbon is a, a forest growing stock volume. And as you can see from this uh, satellite data derived uh, map on the forest carbon uh, the, the, uh, on uh, growing stock volume is very uh, 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 heterogeneous uh, and has a different level of, of volume in, in, di in different regions. The forest age classes are also very important because the young forest and the mature forest are uh, absorbing uh, carbon uh, with uh, different rates. Uh, the using uh, remote sensing data combined with uh, models, uh, we are able to derive information about uh, stock, standing tree stock volume, uh, annually, at the country level, uh, and uh, this information is covering period from beginning of century uh, up to date. Uh, and also, uh, the remote sensing data and modeling uh, can be used to decompose the, the standing tree's volume to different uh, components like growing stock volume and uh, dead tree stock volume, and also uh, to estimate fallen dead trees stock volume. Using all of this uh, big amount of information, we are estimating carbon stock in, in Russian forest at annual level since beginning of, of, of the year, of, of the century. And uh, According to our estimates, uh, for now the Russian forest contained about 52.6 uh, billion tons of carbon, 
and the average annual carbon uptake of forest in time frame of 2002 2019 uh, is estimated at about 195 1994 uh, million ton a year for some year it could, could be uh, smaller some uh, for some year it can, can be bigger and for example the maximum carbon uptake for considering period was estimated at about uh, 419 uh, million ton a year, and this was happened in 2007. And uh, this amount is demonstrating huge greenhouse gas absorption potential of forest. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. So my home. Thank you very much for your presentation. And now I would like to move on to our next presentation from the representative of the Space Generation Advisory Council. Ma'am, uh, you are there? Uh, yes, we see your slide. Thank you so much. Perfect. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Newman, and the uh, UNOSA team for facilitating the organization of the technical presentations. And I would also like to thank the Space Generation Advisory Council for allowing me to speak on this subject. Before I start, I must say that I am only speaking in my quality as co-lead of the Space and Cyber Project Group of the Space Generation Advisory Council. Today, I will present how the development... I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, ma'am, but we are seeing your screen that has your teams, not uh, the um, your Oops. slide. Yes, the other one. That's good. Thank you very much. I apologize. Yes, that's good. Today, I will present how the development of safety norms for space systems can foster sustainable social economic development. Safety measures applying to space operations, like the guidelines for the long term sustainability of outer space, are beneficial in the context of civilian and commercial activities to mitigate concerns and promote the long term sustainability of space activities. Safety related issues like incapacitation of a space asset caused by a cyber activity or debris from collisions involve a growing range of actors and assets, both civilian and military, private and public. A prudent, reasonable behavior of civilian actors and industry players should reduce the probability or even severity of the damage caused.
habitats. Outer space is a shared domain where individual actions have collective consequences. And at the same time, most space systems are interconnected in cyberspace. The consequences of a lack of risk mitigation measures from a party or a lack of awareness with regards to these issues could have a harmful set of consequences and even cause physical damage and incapacitation of objects in orbit, even though they are less visible than those resulting from kinetic quantum space activities. Disruptions in cyberspace, especially if they happen against a space-based asset, is an underlying source of instability in outer space. And bridging the discussion will offer better protection of the role to state and non-state space operators, because neither in cyberspace nor in outer space can we deny today an interconnection between all of the stakeholders and the need to discuss together ways of maintaining outer space for peaceful purposes and foster socioeconomic activities. You may contact uh, our project group using the email address communicated in the document that will be shared. Thank you, Mr. Newman and the UNOSA team for your support through the organization of this session. Thank you to the SJC for facilitating the discussions. Thank you for your attention. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And now I would like to move to our last presentation of the day from the representative of the ISPRS. However, I do not uh, see her on. Oh, here. I'm, I'm present. Ah, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we hear you loud and clear. Please proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lena Halonova, and uh, I'm ISPRS president since, nine, uh, since uh, June 2022. And I would like to present changes which appeared during the Congress. This is always an event uh, which uh, is the change between headquarters and officers and scientists who uh, lead the scientific development within the following four years. Next slide, please. The beginning of the society is already in 1910 when the society was founded by Edward Tolleja in Vienna and uh, started uh, with a focus on photogrammetry only and uh, remote sensing was added later on in 1980. All this umbrella, international umbrella, this is our beginning and this is uh, our present type. Uh, next, please. The science uh, and topics of ISPRS I divided into five uh, technical commissions. The first one is dedicated to sensor systems, to technology. The second one to processing of photogrammetry. The third one to remote sensing tasks and research. The fourth one to spatial information science. And the last one to education and outreach. You can see also names of Technical Commission presidents and coming uh, countries that are coming from. Next one, please. This is an example of uh, our working groups. I spoke about technical commissions. Technical commissions are broad topics and uh, they are divided generally into about 10 working groups. So we talk about 50 to 60 working groups, which are focused on individual, more detailed topics, focused on satellite missions and cancellations of, for remote sensing, for example, microwave in Sinta, INSAR technology for Earth observation, multispectral and uh, hyperspectral and thermal sensors, LIDAR, laser automatry and integration, orientation and calibration validation. This is a just example of working groups belonging to Technical Commission 1. Next one, please. This is another example which shows what is involved in Technical Commission 3, focused on uh, remote sensing. So we, you can see that uh, an important part is uh, remote sensing data processing and understanding. And I would like to stress that this is a very important part, since many people speak about remote sensing, but uh, 
if we do not understand really the physical basis and uh, the income from that derived for users is important steps how to profit and benefit from remote sensing widely and more uh, than we are doing that now. And uh, the second line of uh, working groups are lines dedicated to detailed applications like remote sensing of atmosphere, change detection, agriculture, uh, hydrosphere and cryosphere, environmental and health analytics. And uh, the last one is a combination of uh, individual focused applications which combine them into final decisions and analysis of disaster management because it's a combination of analysis of atmosphere, of land cover change detection, etc., etc. And uh, we have a new working group which uh, would like to attract more users and its name is Remote Sensing and Inclusive Developments to leave no one behind. And uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, belong also to a very important part of our scientific lives in the world. And openness, it's a hot topic which is now analyzed in many countries and in many universities and so on. To have the data open, to be available for more of us and uh, to use them. Next one, please. This is an example of uh, remote sensing of the atmosphere. So the reaction for uh, the impact of uh, COVID-19 during a year shows these maps, for example. So our scientists react very quickly on what's going on in the world. Next one, please. This is an, uh, another example showing the synergy of uh, individual working groups which uh, help the combined working group called disaster management. We are facing more and more many disasters, starting of the earthquake which have happened in uh, Turkey and Syria yesterday and on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. So whenever we are ready, we, better, we can better react to these uh, events and we can help them with uh, products which are produced just directly during the events and after that. Next one, please. Uh, ISPRS uh, develops not only applications but mainly basic research. And this is an example how the research in remote sensing is not a simple way. It's a way which has different options and which brings us different results. And we have to decide which results are reliable, which are more realistic, which are close to reality, and so on. So the original image was processed by deep learning, by a random forest, by support vector machine, so by artificial intelligence. But this is not a, a total solution. This is still a step to work on it and continue the research. Next one, please. Many activities which are done within research and publications are also presented at ISPRS congresses or conferences. And the first one, which is already in April this year, starts at uh, 24th and lasts till 28th April, takes place uh, in Turkey, in Antalya, at the southern coast of Turkey, and it's called 39th International Symposium on Remote Sensing of Environment. And the sub motto, subtitle is From Human Needs to SDGs. We again see SDGs like a connection with uh, many, many scientists, and we welcome scientists from various branches to take part in and to talk about 
their implications of geospatial sciences, which combine photogrammetry, remote sensing, and GIS together to the better future and to fulfill human needs in SDGs. The next one, please. This is a uh, map and uh, uh, aerial photograph of the venue of uh, SRC conference. The next one. participation of the conference is with people, with paper or without paper. So those who are really interested in having a discussion, a deeper discussion, are invited just to come and take part in uh, tables, in, at meetings, and uh, share their experience uh, and ask for cooperation and so on. So this is how to take part in. Thank another, please. And this is an, an overview of most important events uh, of our schedule. So I started uh, with uh, the International Symposium in Antalya. The second uh, biggest uh, event of ISPRS is called ISPRS Geospatial Week, and it takes place also this year in September, and it's organized in Egypt, in Cairo, for the first time on the African continent. So we are very grateful to our colleagues uh, from uh, Cairo who decided and accepted our wish to organize this event in Cairo. Then we have uh, remote sensing symposia. Uh, we have five commissions, so therefore we have uh, five uh, symposia in different countries. I'm sorry they are not seen here. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened and uh, they will take place in the Philippines, in Brazil, in uh, China, and uh, in Australia. All of them are in 2018. And the last and the biggest event of ISPRS, which follows the, the last Congress in Nice last year, is a Congress 20, uh, uh, 5th Congress, which will take place in uh, Toronto, in Canada, in June, and uh, I would like to welcome all of you to at least one of these uh, events to participate and meet our colleagues, our scientists, our young generation, and uh, talk about your experience, your wishes, your imagination, how remote sensing could uh, help members of uh, COPUS and people working in uh, space sciences in the future. Next one, please. So this is the, the date and uh, the places where the conferences will take place. The next one, please. I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to thank organizers for accepting this presentation in the program. Thank you so much for your presentation. And that brings us to the end of the technical presentations for this morning. We will begin our technical presentations this afternoon at 5.15, that's 17.15 Vienna time. And this afternoon, we will hear presentations from Canada, two from the Russian Federation, a presentation from the representative of Norway, and uh, a pres two presentations from the organizations the Moon Village Association, and PSIPW. Uh, and that will begin at 5.15 uh, this afternoon here in the plenary room. Uh, these are the uh, 60th uh, session of the Scientific and Technical Subcommittee present list of the presentations. Uh, though, as just a reminder, the list is available on the website of the Office for Outer Space Affairs on the page for the 60th session of the Scientific and Technical Subcommittee. And with that, I would like to thank you very much and look forward to seeing you this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>